Greetings and welcome to Give Us Lectures. So today I'm going to be presenting to you the solutions to NAPI 2021-2022 physics. And these solutions are going to be presented to you in three different videos. The very first video is going to contain the solutions on question 1 to 10. The second video is going to contain the solutions on question 11 to 20. And the third video is going to contain the solutions on question 21 to 30. So it's important for you to subscribe so that each time I upload the solution set, you'll be the very, very first person to be notified directly by YouTube. Okay, let's move straight into solving the questions. Question 1 of that question paper reads, The magnitude of the force F between two masses M1 and M2 separated by a distance R is given by the expression F equals G M1 M2 on R squared. The base units of G are, we are given options A, B, C, and D. So let's move straight into the solution. So this is the expression of the force given to you. And this expression is the expression for the gravitational force between two masses M1 and M2. So when you make G subject of formula here, you obtain G to be F R squared on M1 M2. Therefore, the unit of G, that is the unit of the left hand side, equals the unit of F R squared on M1 M2, that is the unit of the right hand side, and must be equal to the unit of M A R squared on M1 M2, since F is equal to M A. Therefore, the unit of G become And that corresponds to solution B, as you can see here. Since A is different from what we have obtained here, A is therefore wrong. C2 is different and is wrong. D2 is different and is wrong. So the correct option is B. Let's move now into solving question 2. And question 2 reads, the diagram in figure 1, so this is the figure. The diagram in figure 1 shows the Ricoplanar forces P, Q, and R acting on a point O. If the forces are in equilibrium, then which of the following is correct? You are given options A, B, C, and D. So these are the Ricoplanar forces that is the act on the same plane, and they act at the common point O. This type of forces are analyzed using the Lamis theorem. So from the Lamis theorem, which says that if the Ricoplanar forces act on a point, in a body and keep it in equilibrium, then each force is proportional to the sign of the angle between the other two forces. So, keeping that definition in mind, we notice that the force P is directly proportional to the sign of the angle alpha since it is the angle between the forces Q and the forces R. Also, the force R will be directly proportional to the sign of the angle gamma between Q and P. Also, the force Q will be directly proportional to the sign of the angle beta between the force R and the force P. Essentially, we notice that P on, that is P, all over the sine of this angle alpha must be equal to Q on the sine of the angle beta, which must be equal to R on the sine of the angle gamma. And that corresponds to the option B. If you check the option A, it doesn't correspond, and hence the option A is wrong. The option C, likewise, is wrong. And the option D2 is wrong. So the only correct option there is B. So this is your correct option. So let's move now to the question theory, which reads, suppose the maximum power delivered by the engine of a car of mass M is P in watt. The minimum time in which the car could accelerate from rest to a velocity V in meters per second is given by the expression you are given options A, B, C, and D as always. They will always give you options A, B, C, and D. And it's now your place to find your or get your solution. So we notice that the work done is always equal to PT. But the work done in this case is the kinetic energy since 
the car is moving. Hence, the final kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared since the car starts from rest, that is from rest, the initial velocity from rest is always 0 meter per second. And the final velocity after some particular time is V. So we say that V final is equal to V. Therefore, the final kinetic energy will be half m V final squared. But since V final is equal to V, we therefore obtain half m V squared. So that is the final kinetic energy. And the initial kinetic energy is equal to half m V initial squared. But the initial velocity is 0 meter per second and hence the final kinetic energy is going to give us 0 joules. Therefore, we replace this expression by PT and we replace change in kinetic energy by half mv squared since the change in kinetic energy is final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So this is the expression for the change in kinetic energy. Therefore, making T subject of formula in the above expression, we are going to obtain mv squared on 2p which corresponds to the option D. So we say that the option D is correct, while this option is wrong, this two is wrong, and this two is wrong. So now let's move to question four, which reads, if a river flows from west to east with constant velocity of one meter per second, and a boat leaves the south bank heading towards the north with velocity 2.4 meter per second, then the resultant velocity of the boat is, you are given options A, B, C, and D. So from the above, you can deduce or you bring out this figure. Remember that your Cartesian plane is always like this. So this is your Cartesian plane, where this is your south, this is your north, this is your west, and this is your east. So the river moves from west to east with this velocity, while the boat moves from south to north with this velocity. So the resultant velocity vr is given by this vector. Essentially from Pythagoras theorem, the magnitude of this velocity will be equal to 2.6 meter per second. So the solution is A. So B is wrong, C is wrong, and D2 is wrong. So now let us look at question 5, which reads Substances that elongate considerably and undergo plastic deformation before they break are known as A. British substances, B. Breakable substances, C. Ductile substances, and D. Elastic substances. If you master the definitions of brittle, substances, breakable substances, ductile substances, and elastic substances, then you will note that, or you will notice that C is the correct option. So let us look at the definition for brittle substances. Brittle substances are substances that break with the application of stress with little elastic and plastic deformation. That is, there's always little tendency for them to deform before fracture. An example is a glass cup. If you apply a very high force on this glass cup, then it's going to break. While a breakable substance is one which easily breaks in a weakened state. Going to ductile substances, it is simply the ability of a material to be drawn or plastically deformed without fracture. While elastic substances are those which gain their original shape and size after deformation. So from these definitions, you conclude that C is the correct option. So now, let's move to question 6, which reads, Internal conversion is a process whereby an excited nucleus transfers its energy directly to one of the most tightly bound atomic electrons, causing the electron to be ejected from the atom 
and leaving the atom in an excited state. The most probable process after an internal conversion electron is ejected from an atom with a high atomic number is that. So, looking at the solution, you are going to notice that when studying radioactivity, we study internal conversions, and we know that for internal conversions, there is X-ray production. That is, the atom always emit one or several X-rays after an internal conversion process has occurred. We also notice that in radioactivity, we have nuclear transitions where there is gamma, beta, and alpha decays. So essentially, we need to look for the options having emission of X-rays. So when you read option A, which says, atoms return to its ground state through inelastic collision to other atoms, is obviously wrong. B, atoms emit one or several X-rays. This option is really correct, but we cannot proceed. We cannot choose this option without looking at how the others are. So when you look at option C, you see that it says the nucleus emits a gamma ray this option is not for internal conversion, it is rather for a nuclear transition or for a gamma decay. While option D says that the nucleus emits an electron, this option is also false. Hence, the option B is the correct option. So now, let us look at question 7, which bit. The minimum energy required to pull the nucleus apart is called A, ionization energy. B, electron affinity, C, chemical energy, D, binding energy. So for you to be able to answer such questions, you must first of all know the definitions of A, B, C, and D. So let's look at the definition of ionization energy. Ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from an isolated atom or molecule. Electron affinity is the degree to which an atom or molecule attracts additional electrons. Chemical energy is energy stored in bonds of chemical compounds. Why nuclear binding energy in experimental physics is the minimum energy that is required to disassemble the nucleus of an atom into its constituent protons and neutrons. Hence, we can conclude that the option D is correct, since the binding energy is the energy required to pull the nucleus apart, separating it into protons and neutrons. Remember that the nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons, and electrons are orbiting the nucleus. So for you to be able to pull the nucleus apart, then the energy required to do that is the binding energy. So now, let us look at question 8, which reads, Angular velocity of the second hand of a clock is 0 0.105 rad per second, and the length of hand is 1.8 cm. Then, the speed of the tip of the hand is A, B, C, or D. So you are given options A, B, C, and options D. So let's look at the solution. Before looking at the solution, let us draw well, let us have a diagrammatic representation of the above information. So this is your clock. Quite unfortunately, the circle is not quite perfect. This is your clock, and let's say this is the second hand of the clock. We notice that this second hand goes round or executes circular motion. At every point in time, it executes circular motion. So when it goes through one complete revolution, it has executed circular motion. So we know that for circular motion, there's a particular distance we call r, which is the radius of the circle, and there is always a linear velocity v, which is given by omega times r. So now let us look at our solution. So we are given omega, which is equal to 0 0.105 rad per second. We are given r. That is the length of hand of the clock or the radius of this circle. And from the formula V equals omega R, we're able to find that V, the linear velocity, is equals to 0 0.189 centimeter per second. And we're able to conclude that the option A is the correct option. So now let us move to question 9, which reads, a loudspeaker cone sending a pure node of frequency 2.4 times 10 to the power 3 hertz Execute simple harmonic motion of amplitude 2.0 times 10 to negative 3 meter. The maximum acceleration of the cone is, we are given options A, B, C, and D. So let us bring out the physical quantities we have in the question. We are given the frequency F as 2.4 times 10 to the power 3 hertz. So we are given this frequency in the question. We are also given the maximum amplitude as 2.0 times 10 to negative 3 meter. So we are given this quantity. We know that for every simple harmonic motion, 
a is equals to negative omega squared x where a is the acceleration so this is the acceleration omega is the angular frequency and x is the amplitude essentially omega is equals to 2 pi f so we want to express that equation according to the physical quantities that were given so when you replace omega with 2 pi f you obtain a to be equals to 4 pi f squared x when you replace the quantities f and x in this expression you are going to obtain a to be equal to 4.5 times 10 to the power 5 meter per square second essentially the solution is b so a was wrong c was wrong and d was wrong so now let us look at question 10 which read determine the magnitude of the resultant force by adding the rectangular component of the three forces shown in figure 2 we are given options a b c and d so let's move straight to our solution so this was the figure given and we notice that in this figure we have a system of three forces acting at this point so we need to resolve the forces f1 and f2 along its vertical and horizontal component notice that the force f3 is already acting along the vertical so resolving the force f2 along its horizontal component we are going to obtain f2 equals 45 and along its vertical component we are going to obtain f2 sine 45 for the force f1 being resolved along its horizontal component we are going to obtain f1 equals 30 and along its vertical component we are going to obtain f1 sine 30. we now notice that the forces now act only along the vertical and along the horizontal though in different directions so we have some forces acting only as such and we have some other forces acting only as such so this is along the vertical and this is along the horizontal so we need to choose a particular direction where our forces will be positive and another where our forces will be negative so by convention we are going to choose the upward direction to be positive and this other direction to be our positive so summing all the vertical forces we are going to obtain f1 sin 30 plus f2 sin 45 minus 50 so we have f1 sin 30 plus f2 sin 45 minus 50 and 50 is negative or we are subtracting 50 from f1 sin 30 plus f2 sin 45 because it's acting opposite to the direction that was chosen to be our positive so when you evaluate this expression you are going to obtain this expression so the sum of all these forces is equals to 28.03 newtons so you can see here f2 cos 45 minus f1 equals 30 and when you evaluate that you obtain and when you evaluate that you obtain 9.72 newtons so the resultant is given by the square root of the square of the horizontal plus the square of the vertical forces so when you evaluate that you are going to obtain 29.7 newtons and your solution is a as you can see here 29.7 corresponds to a so b c and d are not correct <laughs>